Hi gorgeous, my name is Ingrid Anna and welcome to the Divine Femme Money Show. Sit back and relax because you're in for the juiciest conversation for women about money, power, sensuality, relationships and business. So the question I have to ask you today, gorgeous, is what do rich women and poor women do differently? Why is it that one woman thrives and one woman struggles? And I know for sure that it comes down to energy and strategy, intent and behavior. Nothing is as powerful as a woman who owns her worth and knows how to get paid by being herself and sharing her gifts with power and integrity. Absolutely nothing. Because when a woman rises into her personal sovereignty, she changes the world every single time. It's how we're wired. So what I'm going to say today may ruffle a few feathers, but it's intentional, gorgeous. I really want you to have the awareness and the wake up that you need in order to ensure that you rise into riches, okay? We've got to stop lying about ourselves. We've got to stop being confused and overwhelmed. We've got to stop discounting ourselves. And we've got to get into the energetic alignment that you need to release poverty codes and rise into riches and wealth and service from a place of overflow. So let's get this show started. You can find the Divine Fan Money Show at your favorite podcast provider and at ingridarna.com slash show. Hey, gorgeous women. Welcome, welcome, welcome to rich woman or poor women, woman. <laughs> Can't talk today. This top is really playing up. Hey everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Um, let me just sort of organize myself a little bit here. I just look like I'm all swallowed up in pink velvet. Um, okay. Let's get started. I'd love to know where you are coming in from, what you're going to be releasing today. If there's one kind of area in your life where you feel maybe a little bit stuck um, during this journey together over the next sort of 30 to 40 minutes. I'll see how we go. I really want you to begin to tap into any resistance. And we'll be talking about the potency of learning how to deeply receive. And I think a lot of women, I know that I was really crap at that. I still have to work at it actually, because I'm such a giver and it's beautiful to be giving and generous. And you also want to be able to receive an equal measure. You know, it's not a a form of like calculating it all, but it's this beautiful, divine, infinite flow of abundance. And you can't have an infinite, infinite flow of abundance if it's not give and receive. So you may have often heard of me talking about nourishment and pleasure in business and in life. And it is literally almost impossible when we have these sort of unforeseen forces, unforeseen um, enemies and energies um, that are trapped within the spirit and the body. So there's a lot that I want to cover today. I've literally written all these different notes. So I think I could actually be here for about three hours at least, but I'm going to be really focused today. And I was doing a video just before sharing and hey, everybody. Hello, hello. Hey, gorgeous women. Hey, everyone. Um, Sharing really where I began. And I began when, you know, my real massive transformation began when I hit pretty much rock bottom. I was living in New York City. Um, I have a few rock bottoms, like we all do our dark nights of the soul. But one of mine was when I was living in New York, I was working in digital marketing and advertising. I was a corporate ad executive at 28 28 for an advertising agency in New York. And um, I literally couldn't walk to the toilet. And you know, you realize that something is wrong at that point, right? So I had to almost like crawl on my hands and my knees. I was living in a very small, like 500 square foot apartment in a very trendy area in New York. And I was single, I was alone, and I was a workaholic. I had a lot of unresolved trauma from my past that was really all consuming. I grew up with a very lovely father who was very toxic and abusive and put an enormous amount of pressure on me to be like a child prodigy. So with all that angst and there was many different layers that I had that I'd been carrying at that point for decades, uh, my body began to shut down. And that was the first time I was diagnosed with chronic adrenal fatigue. 
And through my journey, a lot of you may not know, but I have studied mind-body medicine, healing, nutrition, shamanism. And I first started to study that work uh, because I really needed it myself. I studied eating psychology and I had to learn how to calm my central nervous system. I didn't really even understand what that meant. in order to really heal. So it's taken me many, many years of research, um, uh, trial and error, kind of getting it half, you know, a part of the way and then going deeper and deeper and deeper. And I, I just want to say to anybody today who's going through their transformation, I think as a human being, having this human experience, we are constantly up leveling and upgrading, but I do believe we can reach a new homeostasis of being where the ascensions may be still incredibly rapid, but they're not painful. They're not um, debilitating. Um, so just make sure that you really ask the divine and creator to support you. And one of the key things that I did that has really helped me is that I always ask for deep, intuitive divine guidance. So during my journey through my chronic health issues, through losing a company in New York, some of you might know, I had a clothing line called Body Love. I came home and had to start from scratch. You've probably heard of the story and I don't want to repeat myself um, too much on that today. But I have had to really learn how to become my own mother, lover, father, supporter, uh, champion. My husband supported me a lot in the business. He always he sort of believed in me. But it was really my drive and my vision. And when you begin to have a vision that is so clear, it's literally all consuming and you become the embodiment of that vibrational reality. Okay. So you don't, one very important part about becoming a rich woman is you've got to make a choice. And I made that choice about five years ago, right? I made a choice that I was going to learn how to release myself from the vexins, the spirits, the drama, the chains, my own victimhood. And I really began to work with quantum realm, healing, energy, frequency, as well as becoming incredibly deliberate about where I was spending my time, where what I was actually doing to move my business forward. Okay. So often with the women that come to work with us, they have quick, not everybody because everybody has a different journey, but there are a lot of women who make money really quickly. And it's not because it's a get rich quick scheme or anything like that. It's because they've embodied a new frequency and they're doing very specific, deliberate things. So everything that I did to radically grow my business um, is in my programs. And it's all about, you know, I'm very specific about what I teach. But if I tune into a woman's frequency and energy, I can tell if it's scattered. It's almost like if someone came with a sword and began to, you know, sort of like not hurt the body, but really slash up the energy field. And that comes from a lot of like fight flight behavior where we have not fully resolved the wounding that we've really experienced in our life. So that's the first point. And the second point that I really want to make is when you make a choice, it has to be this fully embodied choice. You can't have one foot out and one foot in because when you stand like that, for example, you're very unstable. So if we look at everything from a quantum manifesting realm, the energy is like a crystal grid. Everything is so clear. There's this clear command. There's a clear vision. There's a clear intention. And then from that, there's a clear set of behaviors that match that vision and match that frequency. So I want you to tap into yourself for a moment. You might want to close your eyes, put one hand in your heart, one hand in your womb space and ask yourself, you know, what is the vibration of a rich woman that I need to bring forward? How does that feel for me? And really just feel into it. And you can ask for divine rapid healing right now. And say, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is. I would literally walk around every single day saying, I'm a rich woman, I'm a rich woman, I'm a rich woman 
to begin to shift my frequency. When I used to see someone that was complaining or in scarcity or I felt a weird energy around me, I would send love and light and release and move myself away from that frequency because I knew You know, if I had a fear-based consciousness and I allowed in lower based frequencies to corrupt my vibration, really that was on me. So a big part of learning to live from a place of richness is releasing anything that doesn't serve you. If you see other people who are really struggling or they're very committed to their own scarcity, you know, you can love and bless them and then move move away from that energy field. But you don't need to fix that for them. Really, at the end of the day, if you remain in that constant vibration of richness, of expansion, you actually, just from being in that vibration, begin to shift other people's energy fields because you're a representation of something incredibly light, um, uplifting, it's juicy, uh, and I, ha- I really gave up waiting for any sense of approval, any sense of validation to be able to really embody this for myself. Okay, so I've written a whole lot of rich women, poor women statements, and you can all get that document. Um, Megan, one of my divine divas is here. She can give it to you. I think it also is in the um, summary of today's video above, and you'll get that in our Facebook bot. Uh, Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for that, Chris. She's helping me with the tech there um, to download so you can read it for yourself and begin to really think about it. And when I was writing these statements, it made me laugh a little bit because sometimes, you know, we have we have work to do. There's, It's very important when you want to embody riches, you need to become responsible and aware. If you're not aware of where you might be letting yourself down or stumbling or creating a lot more struggle in your life, um, then you really need to. And I sort of, I've got a big smile on my face because who doesn't sometimes do that, right? Where we buy into drama or we, we're trying to push it uphill instead of like stopping and looking at, well, what are the behaviors and what are the beliefs that got me to this level? Another very important thing that I've done, I made a conscious decision to do and be was I, I decided five or six years ago when I really began to scale my business, I decided that I would, I made a vow and a pact that I would learn and master whatever I had to do to learn and master. Like I was going to do it. I made a pact with the divine and I asked for radical divine immediate healing and all the things that I cannot see, all the subconscious blocks that I cannot see. And we all have a lot of them, some of us more than others. May they be like literally like healed, released, so I could restore and go back to a, a really deep see, deep sense of remembrance, right? Deep remembrance. So with that clear intent, I just have to warn you, I think I've maybe said this before, you might've heard me say it before, be very mindful because you will begin to have a radical upgrade. When you're having a radical upgrade, you really want to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, that you're putting your feet into the earth, that you're grounding your energy, that you're drinking a lot of water, uh, maybe drinking things like chamomile, chamomile tea, peppermint tea to really release and help you with a really nourishing, beautiful sort of ritualized invocation to allow the journey of release and restoration and resurrection and remembrance to be as gentle and as loving as possible. Is everyone hearing me today? Hello, everybody. Okay. So I said here in this document that you might get a little bit triggered and that's okay. If you do feel a little bit uncomfortable or triggered with anything that I'm sharing, have no fear. Uh, It's just going to show you where you may need to do a little bit more work, where there's a transformation that needs to take place and it's all good. So once we have the awareness, we can move move through it. If we don't have the awareness and we're completely blind, um, that's what we have to be more worried about. So we want it to come up so we can look at it, witness it, learn from it, and then release it. Okay, so I wrote this. Uh, Rich women choose to get paid on results. 
Poor women choose to get paid based on time. So if you're doing potent divine healing work and you are able to do that, you know, over say six weeks really, and say that was six hours of sessions, like I always, I'm always saying this to my clients and my students, it's like, think about the results, you know, it's not really, so if you say you were charging even like $10,000 for something like that, you know, and you would have to be at a certain frequency and a certain set of, a certain level of mastery to have that all work really well for you. But I'm just like putting it out there like a big number. It's not really, you know, six sessions divided by, I would say it was $12,000. It would be $2,000 worth $2,000 a session, for example. Now that can make people feel a little bit uncomfortable. Some people can charge that. Some people can get away with it. I know a lot of consultants do. Um, But really at the end of the day, um, it's about the result, about the transformation. So if someone um, heals radical trauma, um, then they're not paying you still at that level for the time. They're paying you for the result that they're getting. So you absolutely want to ground this in. When clients and students come to work with us, it's either sometimes they start selling $25,000 packages, et cetera, right from the beginning. Sometimes it's a $3,000 package, even a $2,000 package, and they begin to then raise their frequency. They begin to become more confident. And as they go along, they can raise their price at any time because you're the CEO diva and you can choose to do it at any time once it feels in alignment and in congruence to you and where you're at. Okay, but you want to get paid based on results and you really want to embody that. Is everyone understanding where I'm coming from with this? Okay, and rich women turn pain into power and even pain into prosperity, pain into purpose. That's what I definitely did. What helped me really get out of my own way was to take the focus off myself and really focus on service. So when I really couldn't get out of my own way and I had a lot of anxiety and fear um, about showing up, speaking up, I had fear about it not working, um, so many different fears, pe- fears of what people might think of me. I've, I've gone through it all, right? I just focused on how I could help another person. It is one of the most powerful energetic shifts that I've ever made and it, and it just always works. Um, every single day you can ask yourself, what do I need to share today in order to be of service? So poor women typically turn their power into perpetual suffering so they don't get out of the loop. I was there for a long time on many different levels in my journey as well so I don't judge people with that. I have a lot of empathy and compassion Sometimes I'm very fierce um, because I understand the suffering so deeply that my calling and my purpose is to mobilize women to go into a state of divine love, divine respect, divine compensation. Okay, so it's really like I'm so fiercely attuned to that. And when I'm speaking to my students or where I'm speaking to someone who's looking at working with me, that's where my vibration is always at. I see each individual with the highest level of love and respect for their next level, for their incarnation, for their remembrance. I can also feel almost nauseous sometimes when I feel... The energy very connected to self-sabotage. And how does that make me feel? It's, um, I think we've just got to decide, decide each individual has to make a decision to break free from that kind of saga. Um, and one of the biggest ways and the best ways really to get out of self-sabotage is to give yourself one specific action that will be self-loving, that will be of service, that will take your business forward, one specific action and stick to it and do it. Because when you do it, you begin to um, basically replace a toxic behavior with a really powerful, loving behavior. And you begin to shift your energy field, you begin to shift the neural pathways, and it begins to become a process that will no longer be difficult or challenging because you've done it. You know, when I used to be so scared of speaking the very first time, 
that I really began to own my voice was when I had to speak to my father who had been um, kind of yelling and carrying on like a crazy person with my grandmother. And he was sort of like really aggressive and animated and full on though, like really full on. And she had uh, started to lose her hearing. And I literally made myself sit down. And this is a beautiful exercise that you could do over the next sort of 24 hours and start to begin to write down what it is you want to say. So a rich woman also expresses herself and expresses her truth. She's not hiding. You know, she has owned her voice. She's not, you know, a poor woman will stifle herself and think she doesn't know enough. I remember my father one time saying to me, I was doing a big uh, talk. I was hired to go and speak at this event. And I had a lot of nerves beginning to come up. And it was before my father died, obviously. He was still alive. <laughs> and um, he was sitting there all frail. And I just made him chicken soup. And my event was the next day. And we're sort of getting along and I'm... Um, trying to get everything ready and feed my daughter and feed him. And I'm thinking about my the event and starting to really set a very clear intent to how I wanted that to unfold. And he says to me, Ingi, Ingi, which is my nickname, Ingi, um, don't act like you know too much. And I remember, you know, I sort of paused and I just thought, God, I've heard this my whole life. Don't act too smart. Don't speak up too much. Um, so my father was lovely, but he also had, was very kind of condescending to women, but he had a lot of fear within himself around speaking up. And he was very strong and very animated and very kind of full on person, seeming like seemingly quite confident, yet quite insecure at the same time. So part of what he was doing in actual fact was trying to protect me. Like if I don't stand out too much, I won't be attacked. I won't be ridiculed. I won't be judged. And I remember looking at him and one part of me wanted to tip the soup over his head. <laughs> and another part of me was like, okay, be loving, be kind. It really did trigger me. And I thought, I'm just going to do, I said, dad, I've got this. We don't need to talk about it anymore. You don't need to worry about me. I've really got this and I know exactly what I'm doing and I know exactly what I need to say. Okay. So going back to the first time I really spoke up to my dad. So I, I was like, my dad always used to say to me, I don't love you. I respect you. So he had this big thing. And I know that my dad loved me, but he had this big thing. He used to say to us as, as kids, I, I don't love you. I respect you. So there he was abusing my grandmother. And I remember writing down, I was quite upset and I didn't, I didn't like it. And I wanted to tell him that it was not appropriate. So I wrote this little letter for him and I wrote it all down and I really processed my thoughts of how I wanted to communicate it in a way that was clear and powerful and also respectful and not really attacking. And I asked him to sit down and we had two couches that were facing, facing each other. And I asked him to please sit there and to listen to me and that could he give me the time and the respect to let me read what I had to read makes me emotional and um, I had to wait and then for him to wait and to not interrupt me because I grew up with a lot of violence and that he could then say whatever he wanted to say after I had spoken. So he agreed to that and he did it and I just said, you know, even though she can't really hear it's all energy and she can see you going on and it's almost like you're hovering over her and using your body and you're in her space and you've always taught me to be respectful but you're not respectful nothing about your behavior is respectful so if your highest value is respect then you're not demonstrating respect and he started crying and we had a beautiful chat in the end and he apologized and that was that and that was the first time I really learned um, as well and I've had to work incredibly hard to not be a person that would rage sometimes I have done that in my journey to rage against um, you know energies and people that are toxic and to learn how to speak in a way that will clearly articulate what needs to be said, protecting myself 
um, having the confidence to do it and to do it in a way that um, gets the point across. Is everyone hearing what I'm saying? This will teach you so much. Just the exercise alone, even if you can't, if a person has passed or you don't want to confront somebody, um, but you just write it down and don't you don't censor yourself and you allow yourself to express it and get your emotion out and then read it and allow yourself to then maybe burn it up or whatnot. But just learning the practice of expression uh, and holding your truth is really re- very, very, very important in all areas of a woman's life, whether it is professionally, with your career, with business, online, social media space. If you're not visible, if you don't know how to communicate with your audience, you're pretty much screwed and not in a good way. <laughs> if you want to hit your payday, you better know how to own your voice. Okay. Rich women act it, um, in spite of fear and use it as fuel. I've been fucking petrified half the time growing my business. Doesn't fucking stop me because I'm so connected to my why. I'm so connected to the service that I want to bring. I'm, I'm so like full on fierce about the emancipation of women's rights. I, I'm over women uh, feeling that they're not enough Uh, It's just ridiculous to me. It's ridiculous. I get it, but it's enough. Enough is enough. So that level of fierceness and passion and having a solid why, like I always say, the money is behind your why, grounds me into acting despite my fear. I don't know any human being on the planet, whether you're a gazillionaire, billionaire, who hasn't had fear, honestly. So we we need to learn how to put it in the back seat We need to learn how to allow it to fuel us, to mobilize us forward, to not stop us in such fight, you know, sort of flights that we we almost like trip ourselves up continuously. So poor women allow fear to paralyze them, right? Rich women constantly learn and grow. Poor women think they already know it all. Or they don't study, they don't learn, they don't think, okay, well, I don't know, I don't know how to do this yet. Let me find someone, a mentor, let me read a book, let me speak to someone um, that can really help me move the dial in my life, in my business, right? Which women choose to believe in themselves? Poor women are constantly waiting for permission and approval. Rich women speak up about what matters. Poor women stay silent about what is important to them. That really expresses what I was talking about before. Which, which, I can't even say it. Rich women, rich witch, rich women slay problems like warrior queens. Poor women allow problems to become the prison that they live in. So it is a muscle. And my husband and I were talking about this. And he's, my husband said, oh, you're very, you know, I don't know if you're realizing or just so... Uh, driven and so much about how do I change this? If I don't like something, how do I change it? What do we need to do? There's a problem in the business. What do we need to solve? Who who do we need to hire? Where, what do we need to change? Um, where are we at with our funnels, our positioning, our messaging, our service delivery? I am a problem solving diva queen <laughs> and you need to be that as well. Okay. In business and in life, it's like solution, solution, solution. I was um, having a rant the other day and someone came to me complaining about something and I said, don't come to me with problems. I've hired you to come to me with solutions. So before you speak to me, come if you have an issue with something or whatever, that um, it wasn't even anything big and it was sort of like this a little bit like little girl over, like vibration and I was like, uh, why are we even talking about this? Like the energy of it is she needed me to fix something when in actual fact it was something to do with her. Uh, And I was like, go fix it or come to me with three different ideas if you need my feedback then. But let's not have a let's not have um, a 20 minute conversation about something that should have been dealt with in literally three minutes. Can you go and deal with it on your own? And if you need help, go and speak to someone else on my team and come to me as a last resort. But come to me with solutions. (laughs) I'm like, I don't want to I don't want to deal with this. Right. And so for me, when I'm with my students, I am hired to be like a laser beam on change this, do this, do that, 
tweak this, bring this in. Um, okay, you've got this emotion and this belief. I can feel it in the frequency. We need to release that. Um, that's what we're paid for as coaches, healers, leaders, consultants. We are paid to really be able to take people forward. Okay, and if you can't do that for yourself, you're going to have a pretty hard time doing it for others in a really powerful way. Rich women are committed to their vision no matter what. Poor women, women give up easily when things get hard. I talked, uh, I think about a week ago, I was talking about resilience when it comes to riches for our resilience, intelligence, courage. You fucking courage. The courage is so needed. Courage comes from heart, but courage comes from that why and that passion and that very clear intent to serve and create change, whatever niche you're in. You will become like a wild woman warrior queen when you really tap into that. The other part of that was like real honoring and taking care of yourself. And then what else did we have? Um, then we had energy and then we had service at the end and strategy. Okay. So how's everybody going today? How is everybody going? So really at the end of the day, for me, um, becoming a rich woman really can, is an internal shift that needs to be really harnessed before we can have the external reality show up for us you know and you don't need to become more in order to earn more okay so for example yes you may learn a new craft a new skill you get better with online marketing messaging video sales uh, copywriting the whole genre of what it takes to have a very successful online business but the essence of who you are is divine woman. That's why I use the word diva. Diva in the in the Ingrid Arna world is a, not a homage to Mariah Carey, but it's about divinity, owning your own divinity. So when you begin to own your own divinity and you don't see yourself as broken and you don't see yourself as a failure and you begin to have this level of honoring and respect whilst learning and growing and healing and ascending and releasing anything that is stagnant and heavy and toxic, um, you will begin to reclaim your own divinity and your own sense of richness that always exists for every single human being on the planet, whether you're a woman or a man or you know, transgender or whatever it, is, whatever it is, each individual has that. It's my belief. I have that belief completely. And once we begin to attune to that vibration, everything begins to become a lot richer. Uh, in terms of, you know, I talk a lot about money, monetization, but at the end of the day, um, my health has been so eroded over the years when I really hadn't done the healing work and when I definitely didn't have a feeling of divinity and connection to source field and to love and to unconditional love for myself. So take some time over the next few days to really begin to tap into your own divinity, forgive yourself and move into a whole new frequency. And one of the fastest ways to do that also is to focus on the future reality of that which you want to receive so if you want to create you know you might we might sometimes hear or you might have heard me talk about creating a pattern interrupt so a pattern interrupt in marketing is when you create say an ad or a video or do an email that literally has people wake up and take notice in two seconds flat a pattern interrupt that you can also use for yourself within yourself to shift out of victimhood or past drama is to focus on Asking yourself, well, what do I want now? What do I want now immediately? And what do I want in my future? And what does that feel like? Always focus on the feeling. The feeling will take you into the future realm. You have to embody that. You have to absolutely dive with that. So basically what I have done is I have trained myself to focus on the feeling. So the minute I wake up in the morning, I'm literally setting a very deliberate intent of exactly what I want to have happen in my day, in the week ahead, in the month ahead, I'm feeling into it. And then all the other beautiful things that I'm wanting are extend and are extension of that clear intent. So 
even doing this every morning and asking yourself very quickly can literally take 30 seconds. What am I intending and what is the feeling of that? And then if you want to go deep, deeper, some of it is just being an embodiment. There's no needing to be doing. Sometimes you need to rest and restore. But then there will also be potentially specific actions. So for me, I'll be like, call that person, do that, follow up with this. I saw someone recently that I felt that I really needed to reach out. Oh, I have it all the time. I have it with clients and students. I have it with a beautiful friend of mine who's coming back to join my team. And it's like chapping into people and going, okay, I really need to connect. And I really feel that I need to do this. And then I spoke to a beautiful man a little while ago. My husband was like, you know, I thought I really want to speak to this guy. He's like this eight figure guy that... Um, is quite well known and I reached out to someone on his team and Chris was like, oh, do you really want to do that? Like we're so, you know, sort of like ahead of the game. And I said, well, I don't want him to do X, Y, and Z in my business because we always already do that really well. But I just feel this really strong intention and desire and pull to speak to this person. So long story short, we spoke and now my husband's like, oh my God, I can see why. And I remember him sort of saying to me, are you really sure? And then even someone else on my team was like, mm, I don't know, is it another sort of bro dude? And I'm like, I just feel like it's really important that I revisit this because I spoke to them years before. Now, when this is an example of when doubt can come in and at the end of the day, you know, I have the vision, I have the like that the force, you have your vision, you have the force, and it will be interesting because people will sometimes question you and you may get thrown off. But getting thrown off uh, is a decision and choice that is only up to you, right? Like you decide. You So I decided to uh, let it go and I sort of validated my decision a few more times. And as I was speaking to it, like this is my reasoning and this is why I want to do it. I'm just going to open the door and see. I actually was impressing upon my mind um, how much I really wanted to do it. I've had a lot of naysayers in my life. I remember when I started making money um, after losing it all and um, I, I looked after my dad for three years with bone cancer. So we lived together and my, I remember telling my dad at one point that I was you know, doing well and I wanted the validation and I wanted him to know that I was safe and I was telling him, you know, I'm doing well. And he just ignored me almost. He sort of rolled his eyes. Uh, even when my husband would speak about it and he'd sort of try to stand up for me and say, oh, you know, Ingrid's doing really well. He would just be like, sort of, you know, and push it off. And I noticed this behavior and I thought, gosh, am I going to take this personally or am I just going to let it go and I'm, I'll let it go? And I sort of felt the pain a little bit. I felt very, a little bit dismissed and whatnot. And then I made a very conscious choice. I'm sharing this story because I think we're sometimes all of us surrounded with people who may not get it, especially if you're a visionary woman, a healer, a mystic, a coach working online. Um, a lot of people do not do not understand what we're doing. <laughs> they can't process it, especially maybe our parents, and they're not used to the online space as much. Partners, lovers, girlfriends who may not get it. But anyway, so I made this very um, specific choice, and I'm smiling because it had a really beautiful and funny kind of outcome to me, and it's quite humorous to me. Uh, because I've grown up, like I was a bit like a child, a little bit, a little bit like a woman girl, sort of, you know, and being kind to myself where we've got the little little girl in us that all wants love and validation and whatnot. And, you know, I did feel a little bit hurt and dismissed, but I just kept going. And so what I did was every single day, I just kept doing my work, showing up, trusting myself, doing the work, showing up, trusting myself. I built my first program. Um, I started selling my first program um, and people started saying yes to me and I just kept doing it and doing it and following through. And before long, over about a year, a year and a half, people started knocking on my door and sort of people in my family started asking me, oh, well, what are you doing, Ingrid? They began to see that I wasn't dependent 
on their validation, that I wasn't looking for approval, that I wasn't looking for their insight. Because at the end of the day, it had to come down to my vision and my insight. It was like an embedded code that I'd made around what type of life I wanted for my family, for myself and the work that I wanted to do. And as I started to, you know, like buy a car or have, um, you know, start to release my Ikea furniture. Not that there's anything wrong with Ikea furniture and new furniture started to arrive. And people started asking me, you know, what are you doing? And they started to pay attention. Now, if I had allowed myself, and look at the language that I'm using, if I had allowed myself to be derailed, which I've done, I have definitely done that. I I would never have... um, risen up the way that I, I'd, I've risen up. I, I really became really, really dependent on my own opinion of myself. I had to begin to trust what I was doing and I just got friggin' busy, put my head down and started doing it deliberately and consistently. Very important, deliberately. So taking, making sure that my business was growing. I think a lot of times women are not looking at that, not looking at the numbers. Well, what is that behavior and those actions that I'm doing every day? Is it yielding growth? Is it yielding growth? So I worked out pretty young in the game what was going to yield growth for me. And that was really valuing the potency of my work, putting a decent price tag on it. I started getting paid and I started teaching you know, my, my biggest hits, you know, the things that I was just so passionate about. Now, remember, I'd been a journalist from the age of 18. I got my first job at A Current Affair. I worked in TV. I was a writer for the Sydney Morning Herald. You name it. I've done so much. So my ability in terms of writing and positioning and marketing, I've been doing it for over 20 years. And I just sat down and I crafted my very first high ticket offer. And I sold it within a few weeks and that was the beginning. And I just kept doing the same thing over and over. Service, delivery, service, delivery, service, delivery, promotion, um, really making sure that I became a voice on social media. And I began to really release any fear of judgment. So one of the biggest things I think so many women um, are afraid of, and we, we teach this, we teach video voice positioning, how to craft and position um, really saleable, divine uh, video content, um, how to write incredible copy so that it engages. But at the end of the day, you know, I have had to learn every single part of this and now it's in my courses. But once you learn this and once you give yourself permission to really begin to own your voice, you will become visible, you will become seen and people will begin to trust you. If you're not seen, if you're hiding, you're not going to create that level of intimacy that is so important because it's really simple. It is just about developing a relationship online right? It's about developing a beautiful divine relationship. And from that, that's when you begin to bring in clients. That's when you'll begin to sell. So if you have any fear around really being seen and speaking up like so many women do, I think it's one of the number one fears about public speaking. You just want to start doing it. Start practicing, start getting out there. So I hope I've been able to serve you today. I'm sending you so much love. I'm a little bit slower today. I'm tired. (laughs) I'm tired. I think I'm going through my own um, rebirth and catalyst. I went to um, Pilates today and I was like really a little bit slower, but I feel that my central nervous system, I've been going through some really deep healings lately, is beginning to relax. I've had a lot of beautiful um, divine growth personally within myself, so I feel like it's just my body kind of recalibrating. And so what do I what am I going to do to really make sure that I go through like really restore and embed this is more rest, more sleep, more stillness, uh, a bit more time for myself um, as I yeah, I go into that next dimension, kindness, space. Um, I used to freak out when I would slow down. I used to have a freak out because I was very conditioned growing up to work, 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 work. So I used to almost have panic attacks around resting, uh, which is just crazy when you think about it. So I don't freak out anymore. Um, I just allow myself to have the space that I need. And then at the same point, I am always about moving forward. 
So I'm sending you guys so much love, um, a million divine blessings. Thank you for being, thank you for being here today. So gorgeous, if you've been listening and you're ready to grow your booming, beautiful online business or you're ready to take your current business into a whole other divine, juicy stratosphere, schedule a call with one of my strategists. We're going to map out a four-part plan to radically grow your revenue and your impact with authenticity, grace, and proven strategy. I cannot wait to explore how we can make magic together. So apply for your complimentary strategy call now at ceodivachat.com.